With inflation soaring to the highest levels we've seen in decades and economic growth steadily slowing down, all signs would point to a potential recession looming on the horizon. However, the United States seems to be pulling out all the stops to delay this recession from happening as long as possible. Uh, what I can say is that inflation has come down really over the past year and fairly sharply over the past six months. We're making good progress. The job is not done, and we're, we're very much committed to making sure that we fully restore price stability. And the reasons behind their desperate attempts to postpone the downturn may surprise you. While the Fed claims they just want to avoid disruption, there are much bigger concerns driving this decision behind closed doors in Washington. Stay tuned. To understand why the US is so desperate to delay a recession, we first need to understand a few key things. A recession is generally defined as two consecutive quarters of negative economic growth as measured by gross domestic product, or GDP. And unfortunately, based on the recent GDP report showing growth slowing to just 1.1% in the first quarter, the US economy appears to be flirting dangerously close to meeting that definition. Imbalances in the economy, we're not there. We still think that there will be a recession next year, but boy, uh, this is a very, very finely balanced call between soft landing and recession. But it's not just GDP signs that are concerning. Other indicators like declining businesses and consumer sentiment surveys are also foreshadowing rougher economic weather ahead. And this is especially worrisome when you consider just how reliant the US is on consumer spending to drive growth. My main point is that consumer spending right now relative to the economy, US economy, Andrew, right now more dependent on consumer spending than it has been in years. In fact, personal consumption accounts for around 70% of our entire GDP. So if consumers start retreating and the economy contracts, the impacts would ripple across all sectors. With consumer confidence already wavering due to high inflation eating into household budgets and higher interest rates raising costs of living, a recession would likely see spending plunge even further. And that's a big problem, because when consumer spending sneezes, the entire US economy catches a cold. It is concerning that a slowdown at the level of a recession could result in widespread job losses, business failures, and jeopardize our overall economic security. This leads us to ask, given the gathering storm clouds, what measures is the US taking to prevent a recession when the conditions not only seem ripe, but also long overdue for one? Well. So far, it seems that their all-out attempts to delay the inevitable downturn may be more about desperation than data. To combat the highest inflation in decades, the Federal Reserve has been aggressively raising interest rates, implementing the fastest pace of hikes in over 40 years. Their goal is to cool demand by making it more expensive to borrow money. That's going to require the Fed to tighten interest rate policy and do our part in getting inflation back down to our 2% goal. However, higher rates are a double-edged sword. While inflation may moderate over time, the higher cost of credit is also slamming the brakes on consumer spending and business investment. With rates now triple what they were last year, household debt payments are rising substantially at the same time, access to loans is tightening as banks factor in risk. This double whammy of higher bills and less available funds poses serious risks to the economy. So far, consumers have been able to remain resilient through the inflationary surge by tapping into savings built up during the pandemic. But the latest data shows those buffers are quickly depleting. To make matters worse, many have turned to credit cards to finance rising essential costs like gas and groceries. Credit card debt is now approaching an all-time high of over $1 trillion as interest compounds. 
However, not all households have had equal life rafts to weather the storm. The disturbing reality is that income equality, which narrowed during COVID-19, has widened again dramatically. Millions of Americans continue to live paycheck to paycheck without stable savings or income growth. For low-wage workers especially, even a minor recession could be utterly devastating. With economic angst rising and consumer resilience waning, a recession at this point in time could be detrimental for those who are already struggling with high inflation. The main concern is whether the Fed can achieve a smooth transition, or if we are headed for a more severe downturn. It is clear that the Federal Reserve is attempting to delay an upcoming recession for reasons beyond what is immediately apparent. Despite the economy's decades-long expansion, our social systems are not adequately equipped to handle difficult times. Although there isn't an official declaration of a recession in 2023, some economists see early signs of a decline in the economic recovery. The robust growth we've seen since the post-COVID recovery looks like it's leveling off, but it's not yet turning downward. The post-COVID recovery that helped the job market and household spending seems to be slowing down. One major problem is the increasing number of low-paying jobs that fail to provide enough income to cover basic necessities, let alone enable individuals to save money for the future. As most Americans are currently living paycheck to paycheck with little to no savings, any significant disruption in income could immediately cause financial problems for their households. Moreover, programs such as unemployment insurance and food assistance have not been strengthened enough to keep up with the rising cost of living. If a recession were to occur, these inadequate safety nets would be unable to effectively support those in need. At present, it seems unlikely that we're in a recession due to the robust labor market. However, the future of the economy depends on whether businesses can pay their workers a living wage, especially in the food and hospitality industries. From an income perspective, things are not as good as they once were. Income inequality has shrunk in the past, but now it seems to be an issue again, where those who have money are in a much better position than those who are struggling. Many people are still living paycheck to paycheck, and the majority of Americans are facing financial difficulties, regardless of their income. That's it for today's video. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Your support helps us reach more people with our content. Thanks for watching and consider watching our other videos right here.